Ray notes class that we wrote code together in at the very beginning of the unit. And we're going to scroll to the very end of this class and add one more method. Um, and the big difference today is that so far in this unit, we've always created arrays of primitive types, arrays of ints, arrays of doubles. Um, arrays aren't limited just to primitive types. We can have arrays of class types. So we can have an array of strings, an array of turtles. We're going to be creating an array of calendars. Specifically, we're going to use the class Gregorian calendar, specific type of calendar, um, just to have something different. So, so it's not just tied to like strings or something. So let's create a method, public static void, just so make it easy to run, create array of calendars. Conceptually, when we create an array of calendars, um, or technically when we create an array of calendars, what we're really creating is an array of references to calendars. Just like when we have a variable of a class type, which actually stored in that variable, isn't all the properties for the object, but rather a reference to that object stored elsewhere in the computer's memory. Exactly the same thing with arrays. Think of arrays as just like a whole bunch of variables all together that hold the values of references to the object in the computer's memory. Um, so in many ways, there's not that much different. Um, we just need to keep in mind um, that it's really a reference that's stored in the array, just like it's really a reference that's stored in a variable of a class type. So here's what we want to do. Let's outline what we want to do, and then we'll go through the steps to do it. What we want to do is create an array of 12 calendars each calendar initialized to the start of each month. So the first element in our array will be a reference to a calendar for January 1st, 2021. Second element, February 1st, 2021, things like that. As a reminder, um, this isn't new information, but when we create an array of references to objects. Oops, sorry. Each element is initialized to null. So remember, when we create a new array, if it's a new array of ints, every element has a value of zero. If it's a new array of booleans, every element has a value of false. If it's a new array of calendars or references to calendar objects, every element has a value of null because we haven't actually created any calendar objects yet. So we have to explicitly, explicit, explicitly, explicitly create new objects and assign the corresponding references, reference to each references to each element. There you go. This isn't really new, but we often forget this step. So when we create an array of integers, we still have to have like a loop to initialize the value of each element in that array to some int value. We're still gonna have to do that with objects, except we're not just gonna assign like odd numbers or even numbers like we wrote before in this class. We're going to create a new calendar and assign the element in the array that reference. Okay. Um, but one step at a time. So first step is to actually create a new array. So instead of saying it's an integer array, this is an array of references to Gregorian calendar. That's the class name. So we have an array of references to these Gregorian calendar objects. I'm going to call my variable here calendars, plural. I think when we have variables that reference arrays, naming them in the plural form helps make our code make more sense. And the way we create an array is we say new, the type, in this case is Gregorian calendar, and then in square brackets, number of elements we want. I want an, an array that will have 12 elements all referencing Gregorian calendars. 
just to make sure we're on the same page, this is worth mentioning. At this point, every element in the array has a value of null. And let's actually write a little enhanced for loop. So for Gregorian calendar is the type. I'm going to call my loop variable calendar in the singular. I think this works great with enhanced for loops. Because when I read this, I say for each calendar in calendars, plural. Let's just print it out. This is just to like make sure we're on the same page that when we run this code, we're going to see that all 12 elements have a value of null. I'm going to run this as well, just really quickly to make sure it works. Perfect. All 12 values are null at this point. To be clear, this isn't really any different than at the very beginning of this unit, when we created an array of 10 integer values, they were all initialized to zero, right? They didn't have the values we wanted yet. We had to write a for loop to do that. We still need to do that now. So let's do that next step. So our next step is to create new calendar objects and assign their references to each element in the array. We cannot use an enhanced for loop for this because one of the restrictions of an enhanced for loop is we can't change the value of elements in the array which is exactly what we want to do. We want to change the value from null to a valid reference to a new calendar object. So we have to use a traditional for loop. So I'm going to say for in i equals zero. I like using i as my traditional for loop variable when it's being used as an index. So for i equals zero, i is less than calendars.length i plus plus. And we'll say calendar sub i equals the reference returned by creating a new Gregorian calendar object. The year, we specify three parameters for the constructor, the year, 2021. The month, i plus one is the month, because we're starting with i equals zero here. And the day in the month, which we said the first of each month is what we wanted. So this will create a new calendar. It will assign that reference to the element at index i, and then it will keep iterating. It will create a second calendar and assign that reference, and a third calendar and assign that reference. So let's copy and paste this little enhanced for loop to print everything out so that we can actually see that now our the elements in our array have been initialized and they've been assigned to references to ca calendar objects. So I'm going to run this one as well. So here they were all null. Now they're initialized to these calendar objects. There are a ton of fields, time, dates, really complicated when you get down to the details of it. So we have to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. But eventually, here are the fields for the year the month and the day of the month. There we go. So everything is initialized as it should be, January, February, March, so on and so forth. The code we wrote here together so far is really, really similar to the code we wrote on the very first day of this unit to create an array of even integers. That said, for some reason, probably due to like still working on developing our, our really strong understanding of how references really work in Java, this step is skipped by students a lot. 
So one thing I see a lot are students creating arrays of objects, which is this line of code just fine, but then forgetting that each element in the array still needs to be initialized by creating a new object of that type. Um, so this is the part that tends to get forgotten. And then we get like null pointer exceptions. So that's the biggest pitfall I wanna share with you today. Um, the second thing I wanna share with you today relates to refining our understanding of the enhanced for loop. So with an enhanced for loop like this one here, because this local variable calendar is we copy the value of the element into this local variable calendar. So the value of this local variable calendar is a reference to, um, to the object. Um, so let me actually show you a visualization of this. So here's our 12 elements in our array all initialized to null. Here's what it looks like after we initialize the first one. The value stored in the array is the reference to the object stored somewhere else in the computer's memory. So when we have our enhanced for loop, we copy the value of this element into another variable like calendar here. So calendar now references that same object in the computer's memory. This is why if we change the value of calendar, it doesn't change the value stored in the array, right? We've copied that reference. That's that limitation of the enhanced for loop. But, and what I think this visualization helps us with, is while we can't use an enhanced for loop to change the value of the element at index zero, we most certainly can use this reference to change any of the properties in the object. Because this element at index zero and this local variable calendar both refer to, it's hard to see, there's so many arrows here, but both refer to the same object in the computer's memory. So if we use the variable calendar to change the day of the month, and then we print out the array again, this reference refers to the same object. We're gonna see that the day of the month has changed. That, dis that subtle distinction is really important for both just writing efficient code for arrays, but also for our understanding of references. So let's capture this key idea from today. So, an enhanced for loop cannot modify the values of the elements in the array. In this example, that means the references to calendar objects. That's nothing new, right? The thing I'm trying to clarify the refinement to this is, but we can call mutator methods which modify the properties properties of the referenced objects. For example, we could change the day of the month. So let's actually do that. Let's make this more concrete. So I'm gonna copy the start of our enhanced for loop here just because it's, I find it hard to type Gregorian calendar. And then this is what I mean by that. We can use this local variable calendar. I can call a mutator method. There's an add method on this class. The add method takes two parameters. The first is the thing we want to, the property we want to increment. And so we want to increment Gregorian calendar dot day of month. So day of month is a static. We know it's static because we're referencing it on the class. It's a static final variable. It's a constant. And we want to increment the day of the month by two. And then we'll copy and paste the print code again so we can actually see how has our calendar objects changed. And when you compile and run this and scroll way over so you can see day of month, you should see now that we have 12 elements referencing calendars. We still have the months one through 12, but now the day of the month instead of being one is now three.
So let me run that as well quick, just to verify. Scroll way over to day of month. And we can see that the day of the month was one, first of the month for every element, and now it's three, which is exactly what we want. 